Finally, another knitting podcast. All right, I hope this is okay lighting wise and everything since I am in a new room and still don't really know what works, but let's just start. Hi, my name is Lisa. I make knitting and crochet videos here on my channel and welcome back to a new knitting podcast episode. Yay! I am happy to be back with the podcast again. If you hear weird noises, it's because uh, this chair is a bit squeaky. I'm sitting on my table now and you can hear the fridge in the background. So hopefully that won't bother you so much. Maybe it's some extra ASMR, ASMR touches, who knows? And also they are doing some construction work. So sorry for that, but <laughs> let's just get started. For those of you who are new here, in my knitting podcast, I talk about all the objects that I have finished knitting and crocheting, the things that I'm working on at the moment, the new yarn I got and like my plans of what I want to make in the future, in like the near future and things like that. So yeah, that's what I discuss mainly in my knitting podcast. So grab your knitting project, some drink. I actually don't have a tea or coffee with me now to drink, but grab a drink, a snack, anything you want, and of course your project, and let's just knit along while I ramble about all my projects and stuff. <laughs> Today it is a pretty rainy day here in France, in Grenoble, so that is perfect for these type of knitting podcast videos, so yeah. Okay, let's first of all start with everything that I have finished already. Um, do I have so many finished objects? Yeah, I have a few, so I can show you those. And the first one I finished the longest ago, it is... It's a bit difficult to show it now. And is it inside out? Uh, no, it's not inside out. It is this crocheted cardigan. Let me show you. Wait. Yeah, it's a bit difficult to show it. It's this crochet cardigan. I will insert some pictures here. You've already seen it on my Instagram, hopefully. But this is a cardigan that I test crocheted for Nastya Crochets. She is one of my favorite crochet designers. And I saw that she was working on this top and I really liked the pattern so much. So I applied to be a tester for her and I pick, I got picked, so that's amazing, and I am so in love with this cardigan. I haven't worn it so much yet, because here it's pretty warm in France still, but I cannot wait to layer this more, even though, of course, some people have already said like, oh, but it has so many holes in it, it won't be warm, but I can imagine that this will look so cool with a white turtleneck underneath it, or um, something like that, or just a white t-shirt, so... I can't wait. I, I really have to get back a bit into the whole knitting podcast way of talking, but, <laughs> but we'll get through it. <laughs> but this cardigan, it was a crochet project, of course, and it had been a while since I had crocheted. I have been knitting so much in the past few months that, I don't know, somehow I didn't crochet anything, and I was so happy to be back with crocheting. It's pretty fast, it is so easy to take with me. I worked on this mainly in public transport. I worked on it in the Flix bus to go to Frankfurt. It was like a seven hour bus ride, so I worked on it then. And it was really, really nice to just have something to work on basically and not really think too much about it. The pattern repeats itself all the time, like the, the way that you construct the flowers, yeah, you cannot really, you cannot really see it like this, but the way you construct the flowers, it is a repeating type of pattern, so at one point I really knew exactly what was the next row after that, and it was so nice that I could predict it, and the construction is pretty simple as well, and really well explained in the pattern, like for example, the sleeves are just, at least I didn't like uh, do any decreases, any decreases so they are 
all the same width and just straight sleeves and that's really nice because then at the bottom you kind of have like a bell sleeve which I found super super cute so it's very easy to work on yet still super fun because of the flower pattern you are constructing the yarn I use for this is um, I think it's basic yarn BC, yeah, BC Garn Bio Balance. I think that's the name. I had this yarn laying around for a pretty long time, uh, and I originally wanted to make like a top with it, I think, but it's a mix of wool and cotton, and I found it a bit too scratchy to really make a top out of it, so I thought a cardigan would be nice, and I really like this combination of half pink, half orange. So uh, I tried to figure out myself how to do that the best, to split it down the middle and I have to say, I did a pretty good job. If you look really closely, you can see it because sometimes with the color changes, you... Like the the way... Since of course, like sometimes it was in the middle of a chain to do the color change... Cha in the middle of a chain to do the color change, um, it's a bit vis visible sometimes, but I think you have to look really closely in order to notice it and it also is not for me it doesn't bother me at all but i really like that i did the two colors because i think it's such a nice statement piece and like i said just on a pair of jeans with a white turtleneck maybe and then putting this over it i think is very very cute and i really cannot wait to wear that more often the yarn itself i wouldn't really work with it again i think it was um like yeah like i said a mix of cotton and wool which i'm not the biggest fan of i've noticed now because the wool is pretty scratchy and very warm and then the cotton i don't know it's just a bit stiff or something it's not very soft I did try to wash it with some hair conditioner and some laundry detergent for a wool and it's softened a little bit but not an incredibly lot so I still have some of this yarn left because somehow I used I think only three skeins or something like that so really not a lot of yarn um, it is yarn that you buy in hanks so you get it twisted and then you put it in your wool binder and things like that so I really haven't used so much yarn for it so I still have quite a lot of yarn left from this but it's at my mom's place now it's not with me here in France so I will figure out what I would do with the, left, with the rest of the yarn once I get back to the Netherlands but yeah I really really enjoyed working on this I think the outcome is just incredibly cute I think that Nastya did a great job at making a very understandable yet fun uh, pattern that is very versatile I think this cardigan like for example in white would be super dreamy and nice as well so I might make that next summer <laughs> we'll see and I really like the detail of like having where is it yeah having like the two little strings where is the other string yeah like Having the two little strings like this in the front to tie it, like you have a little bow here, which is very, very cute. I really like the way that that looks. I think it's very cute. So first finished object, this cardigan. It took me a couple weeks to make because I didn't work on it all the time. I mix it with working on other projects, but I would say uh, maybe like two, three weeks, something like that, that I use for it. Yeah, really nice. It's made on... I did it on a 3mm crochet hook, but I think officially the pattern calls for a 3.5mm crochet hook. But I really liked working on it and I think the outcome is very, very cute. Then, for my second finished object, this one that I finished a little bit more recently. And they are... Da -da -da! Look at them! I finally finished them. They are my Heartstopper socks. Look how cute they are. Ba -ba -ba. Yeah, I finally finished them. I started working on them a long time ago. Like, I think actually like a couple months ago maybe. 
but I have only finished them now, this week. No, the week before this I finished them. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm a bit embarrassed by that, but hey, some projects they just they just take a little bit longer to work on and to finish. And I I did this sock by first knitting. No, I knitted it like plain to the heel and then I duplicate duplicate stitched the leaves on it because I found that way easier. And the socks look so tiny now, but I have very tiny feet, so that's completely fine. Let me try them on actually and see. Yeah, they are a little bit on the small side for me as well, but that's fine. They will hopefully stretch out a little bit after blocking. But I think they are very, very cute and nice. And I think I did make the right decision by doing it duplicate stitch and not doing it as a color work chart because that would have been pretty tough to do. Yeah, what else can I say about them, honestly? I know a lot of you have asked for a pattern on this and yes, I am gonna release a free pattern of like the chart that I used to make the leaves, but I'm not gonna write a full-on pattern for the whole sock because I just knitted a very plain sock and there's honestly nothing special about it so i'm gonna make a free pattern chart on just the leaves and I, how i did it ah, yeah, and in the end i decided to make it them both a little bit different like the pattern is the same but the colors i mix them up a bit because i thought that that would be very cute so yeah i'm very happy with how they turned out as i said before they are a little bit on the short side in terms of length but I think that I can stretch them out um, when blocking a bit, so it should be all right, I guess. And it was just fun to work on something again from scratch, like to make a chart. I really like making color work designs. I think it's very fun to do that. So yeah, I'm really happy with the way they turned out. I think it's really, really cute. I can hear my neighbors coming back to their room and here you can hear what your neighbors are doing exactly so i hope that they cannot hear me recording the vi this video too much and hopefully it won't bother them so much but it's fine it's fine <laughs> ah, and the yarn i use for this is drops okay for like the the pink is drops nord i will link all the exact names of the yarns in the description and then i used let me go by the colors real quick this is drops nord as well sock cope knit socks yeah yawol um lang yawol and this is also cope knit socks yeah and the black is from lang yawol as well so that's what the colors are from all the yarn so hopefully i will have time later this week or next week to make a free color work chart pattern like to put it in a nice document and stuff i will put it online on my ravelry my ko-fi yeah I'll, i think i'll stick with my with ko-fi and ravelry but you will find the links on my instagram and in the description here eventually as well so stay tuned for that and maybe no i don't think it's out, out already by now but maybe just check my instagram and you will find out if this pattern is already out or not <laughs> but really really cute i think that the heart stopper design like in the series the leaves are so cute so i'm happy that i was able to translate it into a knitting pattern successfully and that it always feels like such a nice achievement when you have designed something yourself and it turns out the way you like then my last yeah my last finished object that i am gonna talk to you about is another pair of socks and they are not for me can i yeah, yeah i can show this now i think these socks i was working in them on them in the last video in the last i was talking about them in my last knit and chat video uh, when i was still working on them and by now i have finished them both they're really really cute they have the little mushrooms on them and they're just incredibly autumnal and i really like that type of vibe like especially now that it's raining a little bit it starts to get a bit gloomy i cannot wait honestly to for autumn to begin i'm pretty much done with summer even though here it's still quite hot but for me summer can just 
end and let's get to autumn and autumn and winter i think that would be amazing but we'll see in a few months from now maybe i'm very sick of the cold and rain and things but for now i'm very excited for autumn and i finished these socks they are the magic toadstool socks by stone knits by charlotte i like her patterns a lot i have already made these socks once for myself these ones a while back and I really really liked them I thought they were so cute so I decided to make them again for a friend's birthday and I will send them with her by post I'll probably buy like a cute postcard tomorrow and then send them to her I think they will be not in time on time for her birthday but she'll just get them a little bit later it will be fine and I think they're cute like look how good they match also with my dress really really nice and the yarn I have used for this is um, Socks Yeah by Cope Knits for the brown. The orange, rusty orange is Drops Nord. The white is Drops Nord as well. Yeah, that's it. Really, really nice. I like working on them a lot. They knit up pretty... I mean, they knit up not as quickly as my own socks because she has a bigger size foot feet than me so it took a little bit longer to knit them than for myself the socks but still they knitted up knitted up pretty quickly and i really liked working on them although i'm not entirely sure if they will fit her feet very well because of course it's a gift so i couldn't ask her what her exact size was like i well i know her shoe size but i couldn't like ask her to try them on or like measure the foot circumference or anything like that so i think they will be a little bit big in the end since i try them on myself and for me they are way too big and i think that it's as i knitted a size mini medium so it's a 64 stitch count um on 2.5 on 2.5 millimeter needles and i think that that's a bit big but she can just wear them inside as cozy socks and yeah let me know if you are a gift knitter if you ask people then to put try the socks on or like to measure their feet before you start knitting socks because i didn't want to do that because i wanted it to be a surprise and not ask her that already and i figured like if it's going to be too big she can just wear them as cozy socks inside and if they're going to be a little bit small i will hopefully be able to give her the instructions on how to block them properly and stretch them out a little bit but <laughs> we'll see if i will be able to manage that this is the thing about gift knitting. I think it's really fun, but I think that it causes me stress that others don't really know how to take care of knits and that I don't really want them to ruin my own knits, <laughs> which I know she will for sure not do. But I think just in general, that's a thing that scares me about giving away my knitted stuff. That what if like a little end comes loose and the person just doesn't know what to do and maybe uh, cuts it off completely and the thing unravels itself and I don't know I have fear of like that which is is it irrational it's kind of but it is I think a fear that most knitters have and crocheters have but maybe some people can really just give a gift let it go let the new owner enjoy their knitted or crocheted gifts but let me know how you deal with stuff like this. But in general, I, I like knitting gifts. I don't knit gifts so often, but I think these are so cute. And I think that they really fit her aesthetic and that they are so autumnal and really, really cute. So yeah, I'm happy with the way they turned out. In the end, I decided to do the little dots on the mushroom with duplicate stitch because I felt that the white would pop out a bit more and it was also a bit easier to work with because otherwise you have to work with three colors at the same time at some point which i think is just a bit annoying so i just did it like this and did it with duplicate stitch and i think that that way it turned out really really nice and cute so i'm pretty happy with that and now i kind of want these for myself as well in this color combo but we'll see if i actually find the motivation to knit another pair with this i think maybe in a while from now i will have that motivation again <laughs> also maybe you've noticed but here in the background i have these beautiful prints 
uh, on there as well. I have some of her, some of the prints as well in my bedroom wall, and they are from one of my knit club friends, Kim Odislager. Uh, she sells amazingly beautiful prints on her Etsy shop, and before I left to go to France, I met up with my knit club one last time, and they super kindly gave me some birthday gifts that I, I'm i so thankful for. They were so, so, so sweet. And she also gave me a lot of her prints and I now hang them up in my wall, on my walls here in France. And I think they are so, so, so cute. So that's a little side note as well. I'm check out her Etsy shop because she makes amazing stuff and it's really cute. And I thought of incorporating it in the background of one of my videos since here my filming spots are very, very limited. <laughs> But okay, that's it for these socks. And that's also it for all my finished objects. Okay, so now after all of the finished objects, let's get to the whips I have. Also, not so many. I have actually just one that I can show you. Yeah, I have just one. <laughs> and that is this one. Let me... Yeah, this is the right, the right side. I am showing you. Da, da, da. Look at this beautiful twisted rib. And the thing that I'm working on now, this is the zipper sweater by Petite Knit. After knitting so many socks, I was kind of done with the sock thing <laughs> again. And I thought it would be time to start working on sweaters because if I start now with the sweaters, they will hopefully be done in time to actually wear them still a lot in winter. So I figured that even if it's not completely sweater weather here yet in France, in Grenoble, that it might still be good to start with knitting sweaters. And this is a sweater, the zipper sweater by Petit Knit, that has been on my mind, on my list for a very, very long time. And that I cannot wait to work more on since it's really cool and not really like anything I have knitted before or like a bit but it's very different from what I've knitted before and I have done so far only the color I'm almost done with the color though uh, you were supposed to knit a bit more than 20 centimeters for the color and I think I am at like a little bit under 20 centimeters now so I'm almost done with knitting the color and I think then it's a bit difficult to now envision what the end result will look like, but I have probably already shown pictures in the screen of what the zipper sweater is gonna look like eventually. But this is like, you knit this in twisted rib, which I love the look of twisted, no, it's half twisted rib, broken twisted rib, I think. Uh, and I really like the way that that looks. I think twisted rib is always super beautiful and very fun to knit as well. So I, yeah, I'm really, really not happy with the way that it's turning out now. And then you like um, fold it and knit it together. This was also the first time that I've ever used, I think it's called Judy's Magic Cast On. It was the first time I've ever used that. So that's why like I am knitting on this side, but down here, there are also still stitches on hold. These are the same stitches that I just cast it on and they are on hold and then in the end you knit them together to make like a double fold, like a folded uh, collar like this. Da -da -da. So this will go like, <laughs> let me see, like this. Uh, I'm wearing my hair loose, so like this. I think it's gonna look really, really cool and I cannot wait to work on the construction with how to like include the zipper in it and I think it's gonna be very versatile in the end as well the sweater itself and I will wear it a lot but okay let's talk about the yarn that I use for this I am using you cannot really see because this one is almost at the end of the skein but it is Fiocolana Peruvian Highland, Highland Wool and Fiocolana Tilia in green tea both of them are in green tea it's like the same color combo Although, yeah, it's really the same the same color, the same name, everything. And I really, really like this color so much. I think it's really pretty. It's I don't re a color I don't really own anything in this color. And in the beginning, I wasn't really sure if this color really fitted my skin tone. Maybe it does make me look a little bit pale, but I think it's 
such a beautiful color that I don't really care about that. <laughs> and <laughs> I will just have to deal with that. I think it's very pretty and the combination of the mohair of the Tilia and the wool is really nice. I always love a good mohair and wool combination. It makes this, for me at least, the sweater last longer like that as well. It doesn't peel and shed as quickly and it looks very beautiful to have like the fuzziness of the mohair with it. So I'm very excited to have that. The yarn is a bit more pricey though. I think in total this was a pretty expensive sweater at least for me I don't often knit with materials where a sweater I'm not entirely sure but I think this sweater the materials was a little bit under 100 euros which I find pretty expensive for a knitted piece since I'm a student and my budget is not so high but I thought I'd treat myself to some really nice quality yarn and make something that I'm gonna wear a lot I cannot wait to wear the finished project product on hikes um, and I think it could be a really good layering piece and very warm as well so yeah really really nice and then the construction with the zipper I ordered the zipper from Petite Knit as well initially I was thinking of just buying a zipper here in a local shop where they sell zippers and stuff but I went to take a look and they didn't have the right size that I needed so in the end I decided to just order it from petite knit themselves since I knew, knew it would be the right size and the zippers looks pretty nice and they had a green one which I think would be uh, really nice and I ordered it from them so it will arrive through the mailbox hopefully in the next few weeks or so uh, since I for now won't be at all at the point where I actually need to put in the zipper I only did the color so far and then now the whole other part starts and I think it's gonna take a while for me to finish this sweater but I so far really really enjoyed working on this it is on uh, the color is knitted on four millimeter needles I think the rest of the sweater is knitted on five millimeter needles which I think is a really good size like it's a size where the stitches look nice and not super chunky but it's also a really nice one to knit on and the process of knitting on five millimeter needles at least for me is really nice my favorite still is around like seven millimeters but i think five millimeters looks a bit nicer like the stitches look a bit more clean maybe and not as chunky and not as homemade maybe but really really nice i cannot wait to continue working on this <coughs> oh my god i am breathing in like some of the mohair fibers i think and <laughs> it's all getting stuck in my throat let me get a little bit of water okay much 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 better i i wonder how many fibers i've breathed in throughout the past years that i've been knitting <laughs> i think a lot so yeah that's it for the zipper sweater by petite knit it's using some techniques that i haven't used before like Actually, so this is not it for the petite knit sweater. I have more to say. It uses some techniques that I haven't used before, like the uh, cast on. I'd never done. Pretty easy. Just looked up some tutorial, and it was r really doable. Um, I think that it's much easier to do that cast on and then knit it together than to then pick up the stitches again. And also, you need to do it like this in order to make the zipper go in in a nice way. So really really happy that I learned that new technique as well I think that incorporating the zipper in the, in the end is gonna be challenging but really interesting as well and then also this sweater just offers a lot of room to just do stockinette stitch which is my favorite so I always love a good stockinette stitch and I'm happy that it is stockinette stitch in general I love the way that it looks I like to knit stockinette stitch so I'm very happy that they leave room for a stockinette stitch <laughs> and that it's not only challenging parts but can't wait to work more on this one I have loads of the green yarn and things left of course I bought the sweaters quantity so I have hopefully more than enough yarn to finish this and I do think it's gonna take me like a month or two months to finish this <laughs> to be honest okay then that's it also for the whips I have because this is the only whip I have since I finished these socks 
the magic toadstool socks for a friend I finished them last night so I have only one sweater with at the moment and that's it so I thought of talking to you about like my new yarn acquisitions and just new acquisitions in general and my knitting plans with them and stuff like that so first of all let me start by this um, this is the mini Lika needle set that I have gotten from my knit club friends for my birthday which I am so happy with it's first of all it's really beautiful and I think the two sets together like having the full set now is just a dream come true <laughs> and I'm so happy with this so I am super grateful that they gave this to me for my birthday really really incredible they didn't have to do that at all so I'm very happy with this I have not I have used the needles only for the cast on because you needed two sets of four millimeter needles and the only ones I have are like the short ones and the normal four millimeter ones from the Lika set so I use it for that but I cannot wait to start using these tiny needles for the sleeves I think it will be so much easier to work on sleeves with a tiny needle and it's very nice as well to have the opportunity of doing one long needle and one short needle like I do with sock knitting often so it's really really nice and I cannot wait to use this a lot <laughs> and then now let's get to the yarn acquisitions I think some of these yarn I have already shown but I'll just show you what my plans with them are and the first of all I see that this yarn is a bit stuck still in the yarn basket so let me untangle it but the first ball of yarn or actually this was a hank and I already spinned it because I knew I wouldn't have a yarn winder here uh, which is true I don't have a yarn winder here <laughs> so I already um, made this into a cake I forgot the name of this yarn but I bought it in Paris in a really cute yarn shop in called Lil Weasel really really nice I actually ordered this yarn the Tilia Fucolana yarn from them as well uh, but I ordered it online and let it deliver to here to like a pickup package point in Grenoble but this one I bought in store with them and it's very pretty like the color is this brownish yellowish greenish almost color and it's super beautiful and very autumnal and I want to make the humble bee bumble bee humble bee Humblebee, I think it's called Humblebee, socked with them from, oh, what's she called? From Fiber Tails with these. And I think that that pattern looks very amazing. Kim from my, net, from my knit club, the one that made these prints, she has knitted those socks and they look incredibly beautiful. So I really want to make them as well. So that's my next sock project on the list. I will cast them on soon, but I'm a bit more in the sweater zone now than in the sock knitting zone but I know that I also always love having a sock project because it's so easy to take with you so it is on the list but uh, this is just something that I'm gonna work on soon <laughs> and then lastly in terms of yarn let me grab it it's this I ordered it online as well yeah oh okay <laughs> I got it finally but it's this yarn. It's Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Merino, no, Soft Silk Mohair. Ta -ta -ta. And I want to pair it with Pernilla by Fiocolana. Really nice. And put this together to make. Now on camera it looks really white, but it's actually this one, the Fiocolana, is in Marzipan, and this is in Marzipan as well. But the color is a little bit different I think this is a bit more grayish and this is a bit more white-ish but together I think it's gonna look really nice and I want to make the Ingrid sweater um, with this from Petite Knit I think that pattern looks really fun and I got inspired after seeing Bethany from Well Love Knits make the baby version I thought that one looked so 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 cute um, that I was like oh I really want to make <laughs> the Ingrid sweater for myself as well I chose for these white neutral colors because I used to always have a white sweater 
but I worn it, I've worn it so much that it's really at the end of its life and I didn't take it with me here either so I thought it's time for a new white sweater and why not make it myself so yeah I bought these yarns and I am and I really cannot wait to work on the Ingrid sweater but I do think I want to finish the zipper sweater first because they're quite big sweater projects and I'm not entirely sure but I think they require the same needle size as well so uh, that would be a bit of a problem working on them on the same time but yeah and then very very lastly in terms of knitting plans I want to make I said this also in my knit and chat video the last one I uploaded like when I was knitting the magic total socks I mentioned that I really wanted to make a piece of knitting or crocheting things <laughs> a crochet or knit piece um, that would commemorate my time here in Grenoble in my exchange semester I think I adjusted the camera a little bit actually so I really want to stop buy a local yarn shop here in the next week or so and buy some nice yarn from there to then make I think I'm gonna do either a sweater or cardigan that commemorates my time here and I think of doing some type of color work design with the mountains and yeah I don't know I think it could be cute like a landscape type of sweater so still a very abstract plan but I really would love to try something like that I think it could be super cool and a really nice memory of my time abroad here in France so I think that's it for now um, I felt again a bit chaotic and uh, thank you by the way all so much for the super sweet responses on the last video I uploaded I got so many comments saying that I should not have to worry about my uploading schedule and stuff like that so I'm very grateful that you are all super forgiving and supporting me no matter what. I think it is going to take a while for me to get back into the routine of uploading and editing and things again. But I really, really enjoy that. So yeah, I honestly cannot wait to have a bit of a more <laughs> have a bit more routine in my life than I have right now. But uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this. Let me know what you were working on in the comments because I always love to read that type of stuff. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you again next week. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, especially now that I'm not necessarily uploading every single Sunday. If you are subscribed, it's much easier to see when there is a new video. So I love you all a lot. Stay safe, please, and do it. Between long days, warm nights, gliding like light kites, sapphire, clear skies, whipped cream, cherry pies. Ooh, every year, right around June 21st.